Hey friend, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you four hearty slow cooker meals and we're gonna shop my shelves for the ingredients. This is my normal working pantry, but I have a three to six month rotating pantry and I'm gonna shop my shelves for the ingredients. Hardly any buying. So for these meals, the only things that I bought was fresh chicken breasts and cilantro. Our first recipe we're gonna shop our shells for is a yummy cheeseburger soup that is perfect for cold days. For our cheeseburger soup, we're gonna need a pound of ground beef. I need to thaw this out so that way we can brown it up really quick. While that's thawing, we're gonna get going on our vegetables. We need potatoes and carrots and celery. Do you guys wanna see something scary? <laughs> we gotta use up these potatoes. They're not looking good. They all kind of have like, they're spudding. Is that what it's called, spudding? We're going to use these in the soup and then later I could peel these up, throw them in the Instant Pot and make some mashed potatoes that we can freeze. So I'm just gonna peel these up and use them for our soup. And don't worry if they spudded on you. Is that the right term? I'm gonna say that. So if they spudded on you, use them up as mashed potatoes, freeze them if you can't use them you are fine. And if there's one bad potato in the bag, it'll definitely stink and you wanna get it out of there because you don't want it to ruin the rest of your potatoes. I saw this TikTok that we're actually using our peeler wrong. Have you guys seen this TikTok? So you take your peeler and you're supposed to go really fast and just go, oh, it's hard to get a base. You're supposed to go fast up and down like this. But it's hard, it catches. But you're supposed to go super fast up and down like that, but you know I'm gonna cut myself. That's supposedly the fast way of using a peeler, but screw it, I'm gonna do it my way. We're just gonna dice these up, so you can have three medium potatoes, just whatever size you want in your soup, but the bigger, the better, just because it's gonna be in the slow cooker for four to five hours, so if they're too small, then they'll cook up really fast. But that's okay, if they end up cooking too long, it'll just cream up and thicken up your soup for you. We're gonna just put our potatoes in our slow cooker. Then in my fridge, I had some carrots and celery, and we're gonna peel the carrots up, and we're gonna shred them. And if we can get the peels in the garbage bowl, that'd be great. Okay, watch at your own risk. I'm gonna shred some carrot, and hopefully don't shred my fingers. Yes, you can buy a bag of shredded carrots, but honestly, this is cheaper. And I already had these carrots on hand. Oh go. Live on the edge. There's gotta be an easier way of doing this. In the comments, tell me. This is a good way to get your aggression out. <laughs> I'm gonna finish shredding these and then add this to our slow cooker. We're gonna get our sliced carrot in there. You need about a cup of chopped up celery. Do you guys have a favorite knife that you love? I lost my favorite knife, but these steak knives I got at Sam's Club, they're super sharp. They work so good, I love them. Yes, like I said, you could use a bigger knife, but yeah. Get your celery into the slow cooker. That is done. I almost forgot the onion. You need onion. So we're gonna go way back here in the corner of my pantry. I keep a bowl with all our bagged onion. You gotta have onion, oh yeah. This is embarrassing, I'm using a steak knife, but I don't care. When have I ever cared? Whatever. Chop up your onion, throw it in the slow cooker. My eyes are starting to sting. So let's get this onion into this slow cooker. Oh my gosh, that, that's a good one. My eyes are burning. All right, we're gonna add some seasonings. We're gonna need basil, parsley, black pepper, and basil? Yeah, basil and parsley and black pepper. Do you guys ever hunt for your um, measuring spoons and wonder where is the one? I could do a half teaspoon. Oh! So you're gonna need a teaspoon of the parsley and of the basil. We're gonna need three cups of chicken stock. So I'm just gonna grab the canned kind. I have big, well, this is bone broth, but I have big containers of this back here. But I like to use those for things that call for like 32 ounces. So we're gonna grab three cans of chicken broth. I rinsed off the tops of my cans. These three cans are a little bit over three cups, it's like three and a fourth or almost a half, that's fine. I'm not gonna waste anything and we're gonna put it all in. I'm gonna give this a mix. We're gonna get this into our slow cooker and this is gonna cook on low for six to eight hours. Or you can put it on high for like four, cut your time. Okay, we're gonna brown up our ground beef. I'm really intrigued with this recipe because it's a cheeseburger soup, but it calls for carrots. So that's where I'm like, hmm, I like cheeseburger casserole, 
love it. In fact, I do have a video on a cheeseburger casserole that I have. It's pretty basic, but I found a new one. But if you'd like to see a cheeseburger casserole, I'll have that link for you down below. My favorite tool is this guy right here. Um, it's from Pampered Chef, but I've also seen it sold in Walmart and it's on Amazon. It's like, there's a certain term for it, but it is perfect for getting in and breaking up your meat. Especially if it's still a little frozen on the inside. Oh, it does such a good job. So this recipe that I found, it's linked below. They didn't really say anything about seasoning the beef. And we got to season it. So I'm going to grab some salt, pepper, and I don't know. It's a cheeseburger feel. Let's do something with a little bit of a kick. Ah, here it is. I found it. <laughs> it's from Auntie Nono's. It's their firecracker. This is so good. It has a lot of heat. So if you just want a little bit of heat in something, this is awesome. I figure it's a cheeseburger casserole, right? Cheeseburgers got to have a little something. We're going to brown this up and then drain as much fat as we possibly can off of it. You want to see a nifty trick? You probably already know this one. Instead of sitting there trying to drain it with a spoon, take your tongue and some paper towels, come in and soak up all your grease. So now we need to melt some butter down in it and we need about three tablespoons. I have been asked about these pans. These are hex clad and I've been asked a lot if we like them and we do because I can use hard utensils like this in my pan and it won't scratch it. Butter is all melted. Now we got to add this to our slow cooker. Hey, this is done. Look at that. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. You'll cook your ground beef like 45 minutes before you serve this up. So add this in. Okay, guys, I get ahead of myself when I cook that I was supposed to whisk in some flour to thicken this. So I didn't do that. Once it's melted, whisk in flour and continue to cook for one minute until golden brown, like the butter. You're supposed to make a roux, not put the butter with the ground beef, whatever. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna use cornstarch. The exact recipe is in the description below. This is Kimmy's version. I do this all the time. I'm gonna add this in and then add our milk and it'll thicken just fine as it cooks for the next 30 minutes. All right, and then we'll add it in our slow cooker. Should I just double check? I didn't miss anything else. Milk, salt, and pepper. And then we'll add the cheese. Oh yes, the cheese. So you can use shredded cheddar or Velveeta. Of course, I'm shopping my shelves. I never have Velveeta, so, but I always have cheese, big blocks of cheese, always. So I rinsed off my grater from the carrots and we're just gonna start shredding some cheese. We're gonna need about two cups of it shredded. This is how I exercise. My arm really does hurt. <laughs> I haven't even been doing this long. Shh, be quiet. <laughs> really hungry. <laughs> We're going to stir this till combine and then we'll put the cover on and just cook it on low for 30 minutes and then you're ready to eat. Okay, 30 minutes. We'll be eating. Okay, the cheeseburger soup is done and it smells really good. Oh my, look at this. Look how colorful. Oh, it smells insane. So once it's done cooking, you can turn it off, let it sit for a minute and this will thicken. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh yeah, this is really good. Top it with some more cheese. I was nervous about the carrots. Nope, yum. Oh gosh, this is good. Serve it up alongside your favorite rolls. Keep a bag of frozen rolls in your freezer. Set them out in the morning, let them rise, and then bake them just in time to have this soup. Oh, this is good. So that way you have your bun with your cheeseburger soup. Next, we're gonna make a cheesy, creamy macaroni and cheese. And it's not just for the kids. We're gonna shop our shelves for this mac and cheese and we need evaporated milk. Since I'm here right now and I need evaporated milk, I'm seeing that I need to pull some things forward. The Kirkland brand of evaporated milk needs to get used first. So I'm gonna put them over here and then I'm gonna move these up and that's how I rotate. I actually got this evaporated milk on sale during um, Thanksgiving time. It was the best price. It was like 80 something cents a can, which beat out Costco. And Costco has been beating out Walmart in their price of evaporated milk. I keep track of all the prices. I have a price book. It'll be out in just a few weeks. And if it's already out, snag it down below. You can track all the prices in your area so you know when a sale is a sale and when to snag them. And this sale, I definitely snagged them. All right, so I need one can of evaporated milk. And of course, mac and cheese, it's elbow macaroni. I always have elbow macaroni on hand. So we'll need one package of this and it is 16 ounces and we're gonna use the whole bag. 
Ooh, I'm old. And this is a easy dump and go mac and cheese recipe that everyone's going to love. Okay, so you have your macaroni. You're supposed to rinse it. We can rinse it now. First, rinse it in your strainer. At least I'm remembering to rinse it, right? The strainer I'm looking for is way back there. And now I have a Charlie horse in my left foot. I'm getting old, you guys. Go away, Charlie. If you guys have been around for a while, do you remember my freezer meal kit video when I lost like almost half my pasta down the drain? That was a sad day. And before you do that, spray down your slow cooker. Oh my gosh. With how creamy this is and the milk and the cheese, you could burn your edges. The bottom does fine, it's the sides. We need some milk and it do, the recipe does call for whole milk, but I don't have any of that. So I'm gonna actually use half and half, the majority half and half, and then a little bit of the 2%. And then you're gonna need cheese. And for this recipe, I'm using Monterey Jack and sharp cheddar. Oh, yum. Where's my cheese grater? Oh, thank you. Here it is. I'm gonna grate my cheese first and then we'll add all the milk in. You'll need a cup of the Monterey Jack. You can use any cheese you like, you guys, but it'll, but definitely use a sharp cheese. It could be sharp white cheddar if you want. I love sharp white cheddar. In the comments, tell me, what are your favorite cheeses to use with your mac and cheese? Mmm, the Monterey Jack, look how soft this is. This is gonna melt down so good. And this is why not to use already shredded, but if that's what you have on hand, go for it. You just have to stir it more often than you're going to have to already, just so it'll melt down. Right, now the sharp, three cups of the sharp cheddar. The whole recipe asks for three and a half cups. You could top this mac and cheese with a half cup of the sharp cheddar. I don't like to do that. I don't like the cheese crust. I just love digging in where it's all super creamy. So I'm actually gonna put all three and a half cups in now and stir it together. But make it your way. It's your meal and it's dump and go. You're the boss. How many knives can she use while making this video? I'm exercising again. Twice in one day. I think it, even a combination of the white cheddar with the sharp cheddar and the Monterey would be so good. Okay, I'm doing that next time. I'm doing it. Let's add our dairy in. Shake up your evaporated milk, pour that in. The recipe calls for two and a half cups of whole milk, but we're gonna do some half and half. Now we need to season it. Let's not forget to season it. Salt, pepper, ground mustard, and garlic powder. Half a teaspoon of all of these. So I'm using my fourth a teaspoon and just doubling. Their recipe says a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder, but I put a half a teaspoon. You can't go wrong. Okay, we're gonna mix this up and then top it with some butter. When you're done mixing it, kind of submerge your macaroni down so that it covers and will cook. So you'll need about a fourth a cup of butter sliced to put on top. I like to use unsalted butter because of that salt factor. This cooks up so fast that you can prepare it two hours before lunch. So if you have little ones that love mac and cheese and don't wanna use the box version, this cooks up quick. This is gonna cook on low for one and a half to two hours. But in 30 minutes, we're gonna get back in there and we're gonna stir it up because all the macaroni is gonna clump together and we don't want that to happen. And then let it cook for another 30, go in and stir it. This slow cooker cooks really fast. When I cook it in here, I have to go in sooner than 30 minutes and stir it up. Hey, it's been 30 minutes, let's give it a stir. See how it's sticking and you can feel it stick to the bottom. We're getting closer. Okay, it's time to give it another stir. We are so close to this being done. All right, our mac and cheese is done. So I let it sit for a little bit and it just thickened. Look at this. I wish you could smell this. It's so good. Look how creamy and thick this is. So you could have, like I said, take that last half cup of cheese and put it on top, but I don't like the crusty cheese top. I like it creamy just like this. Smooth and creamy. Now be careful and watch and stir this one because it does cook up really fast, but it's okay if you overcook it. It's cheesy and delicious. Add this as a side dish or just a lunch. This is so good. It's thick, creamy, tons of cheese. I would definitely put some any seasoning you want on top. In fact, I would think that firecracker, Auntie Nono's firecracker seasoning that we used on the last recipe would be really good sprinkled on top so it gets that like zing in here. This is good. This next recipe is beef tips and gravy. We're heading back into the freezer and I need some beef stew meat. So here is where we keep that. So I need about mm, a pound and a half. And these are about that. Um, they're not quite two pounds. So 
we're right in the right range. We're back in the food storage room and we're going to need some beef broth, an onion soup packet, and a cream of mushroom soup. And I'm pulling from the front and then I'll rotate these cans. We got what we need. Let's go add it to it. And this is the beef stew meat that we get from our butcher. When you snag your beef stew meat, if it's too big of pieces when you get it, just take a knife, chop them up. You can make the pieces as big as you want, but they get so tender in the broth that they'll just break apart on you. I washed off my cans and we're gonna add all three of these into the slow cooker and get it whisked up. Then open your onion soup packet and then open your onion soup packet. This is it's like Fort Knox. Put that down. We're gonna whisk, <laughs> we're gonna make a mess. Oh my gosh! <laughs> then take your whisk and whisk this together. Now add your beef tips. Hold this up really good. Add your lid and cook on low for seven hours. Okay, our beef tips are done. Oh, that smells really good. Mm, these are gonna be so tender. So we have a ton of gravy. So why don't we take some of this out and thicken it up? So we are going to grab probably about three tablespoons of butter. I don't know what happened to my other knife. So let's just dirty another one. We're gonna melt this down and then we'll add the flour. Okay, we're gonna take three tablespoons of flour, whisk this together, smooth it out, kind of cook off that flour before we put the gravy in. We're gonna take probably about a cup and a half of that sauce, put it down in. All right, I'm gonna turn this off the heat though as I thicken it because this is Thick. Okay, we're gonna pour this into the rest of the mixture. Oh, look at this. Oh, those are tender beef tips. I cooked up some rice. This is basmati rice. You could put this over mashed potatoes as well. In fact, all those leftover mashed potatoes would have worked really good with this. I'm in the mood to have it over rice. Top it with some parsley. You can even add mushrooms to this towards the last probably 30 minutes of cooking. I would slice up some mushrooms and add it in. In fact, next time that's what I'm gonna do. Then you have a, like a beefy stroganoff. Look how the beef is just falling apart. It's so tender. Mm-mm. I mean, this is great by itself, but pair it with your favorite side dish, but let me know what you would serve alongside of this. Your family's gonna love this. Our last recipe, we're gonna make some creamy chicken soft tacos. So we're gonna need a bar of cream cheese and grab any salsa, your favorite salsa. The um, paste picante is like the perfect size. It's You basically need a cup and it's pretty much this jar. Just dump the whole thing in. That's definitely more than a cup, but it does not hurt. Put as much salsa in as possible. And I'm gonna use hot because I want a kick to this. I've done this recipe before with like a mild salsa. Mm -mm. You need the kick. You wanna spray this down so it doesn't stick. Lay your chicken breast in. You can use as much as you want. Honestly, whatever will feed your family. Since there's only four of us at home right now, the two big chicken breasts cut in half are gonna be plenty for us. I am gonna just season it with just a little bit of salt and pepper. We're gonna take your cream cheese. Most recipes call for six ounces, but what's two more ounces? Just extra creaminess. I'm just gonna put this whole bar in. This is why we use steak knives. We're just gonna cut this open for heaven's sakes. Do your best just to scatter the cream cheese on your chicken. It's gonna end up getting mixed up when you shred it all anyway. This is a 16 ounce jar of the salsa. Okay, get your lid on. We're gonna cook it on high for either four or five hours or low for six to eight. Okay, let's check on these tacos. And we're gonna make this easy instead of taking two forks and forking it. We're gonna use this guy here. Am I splattering you? Cause I'm getting splattered. That was so easy. And we're done. That is gonna be a yummy, creamy chicken taco. So let's get our tortillas ready. Some lettuce, tomatoes, some cilantro. Oh, I love cilantro. I did that. This is where we keep the bulk of our bread. So we always have our tortillas in so we could do, Derek likes the carb balance. It might be out of the small, to oh no, no, look at that. Perfect for tacos. I always try to keep some lettuce on hand and at least one tomato always going in the house because tacos are a great go-to recipe. All right, we have our tomato and our lettuce. Yum, 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 yum. You can also cut up some red onion if you want, or green onion and get it on there. I'm not today, that's fine, but we need cilantro. Yum. How perfect, you come home from work and that's all you had to do and then like mix that with the blender. Nice, that's awesome. So you can use the little street tacos or little flour tortillas or a corn tortilla. 
I'm not a big fan of the corn ones. I don't know if it's tech. We didn't want that one. Or you could have a corn tortilla. I'm not a big fan of a corn tortilla. I don't like the texture. I don't know why. I just don't. So you can warm these up if you want to or just have them cold. Nice, creamy chicken taco. Mm, yum. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. I have a link below for you on a Spanish rice. It's super easy stovetop. It's delicious. So you can pair that with this. That would be so good. Mm chicken tacos. You might be surprised what you already have on your shelves to make these meals. Also, they're shelf stable. So all you have to do is just change a few ingredients. All the fresh chicken we use today, you can use canned chicken. Click on the video here where I share recession-proof pantry meal kits that will get you totally inspired to have some shelf stable ingredients on hand. And click on this video here where you can get inspired by some more slow cooker recipes. I'll see you over there. Bye.